This one. Thank you. and stuff and also well I kind of want to found that out during the last lecture when I said my ambition is to be ready to transfer to any institution well, that's your short-term goal but what's yeah. your dream my dream uh, principal of LA New York or San Francisco watch my back <laughs> <laughs> all right let's hear it Dick Good, good. Did you uh, declutter your water there? Just now. Okay, good. All right, so in general, let's find what is our, uh, the lowest amount of energy that we need. For, uh, well, what's the lowest that you can allow your uh, approach to be in terms of air support? And what's the hardest part? The end, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's now our default. That's, you got to be set up from the first note. So like later on, you'll hear me play the Honiger, the first, uh, you know, the first piece on the recital tonight. And so I, I like to make sure that I could start from the first note. I, the high C is pretty close to there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the highest part in that opening. So here, I want to make sure that, that, that your form is built upon We, that start right there, and then you're going to learn to see if you can keep that energy and release throughout the whole piece. That's good. I felt that you raised it in a very good way, but that there was no dynamic nature to it. You guys ever opened up a, a speaker cabinet and looked at the, the actual, like, the diaphragm of a speaker? It's dynamic to, like, the energy. It's like... If it's a big speaker, you can feel it. Can this be like a diaphragm that's in, like activated from you and that when you want to go for a note, it's like that the whole thing is dynamic relationship. That kind of, so we feel it. It felt very flat line, but good. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was from a push. And so I want you to take, not a, a tension building breath, but a breath that allows you to release. Does the diaphragm rest up or down? Uh, uh, uh. Who thinks up? Who thinks down? Okay, how many of you abstained? Like almost half of you abstained. <laughs> you didn't vote. <laughs> okay, so the diaphragm rests in the up position, in the passive position. If I keeled over right here, I would exhale. So I st I'm, my theory, I, I, I'm working on this theory a little bit and, and as I'm learning some new ideas from different people, but I still believe that we take a breath and the general nature right before we support is let go. And so I feel like a little bit you're going, here, I, this is the way I can draw it. If I go like this, and this represents, have any of you seen, I, I think I did a video on Instagram on this. That side represents the in-breath. This side represents the out-breath. Where do I play? Some, okay, so if, if this is sort of like where it switches over, is that where I play? Not a very convincing question, is it? No. That's not where you play. Because that would be like one, two, three, four, play. We don't do that. Wait for it. We, I think we play here, or here, or here, or here, or here, something like that. So that I, and that's like me walking. I don't go, I lean, connect, 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so can you then demonstrate that? You yeah. Like inhale and like that? Is that what you? I am already moving forward. In a, I mean, this whole thing is like half a second, right? But I'm already moving forward. So I could go. I connected late on purpose. But I, did you see I was already on the out and it, in a deep let or slightly supported, not pushed. If I push, that's like going like this. That's like going push. But the, we just said the diaphragm rests in the up position, the exhaled position. That's free energy. So you go for free, for free, for free, connect. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Can I uh, share my understanding and, and see what you think? Please. I believe that muscles only work in one direction and then they relax in the other. Uh huh. So the only reason that air comes through our throats down to our lungs is because the diaphragm went like that. We create a vacuum. Uh huh. Right. But that's not, I don't believe that's what pushes it out. Right. We let go. Yeah. But then, but then, as trumpet players, because we have so much resistance, we, the intercostal muscles need to support. Right. right. This is really important to me, so I hope you'll like clarify for me. Yeah. Because I didn't get the, the, the picture didn't help me. Okay. So I'm I, I really want to know more about breathing because I have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. So is it when you're at the full breath and then immediately that's where you attack and you make that's where you exhale and then tongue? How does it work? My my first instinct after hearing your question is that you're thinking about it too much. I'm sorry, but um, I'm sorry to say that, but I, I want to answer your question, but I, I think I would say to you and to you and everybody else is that, do we ever spend time actually, let's call it zero, let's call it not trying to play the trumpet with the trumpet in our hand? Have you ever tried that? Where you actually put the trumpet here? <sighs> And you remember what it's like, I'm not playing the trumpet, but I'm still breathing. You ever done that? You guys ever done that? See, this is, this is conditioned response. If you have uh, an emotional sort of anxiety or some sort of emotion tied to what could possibly happen, for better or for worse, that's going to affect the nature of your breath. So I'm trying to, of course, we want to play in a free, confident way, but I'm trying to tap into sort of, I, I feel like it's a pendulum. So like here, the pendulum swings. This is, represents my breath in a unconscious way. We breathe unconsciously, pass, like, right? We don't tell ourselves to breathe. But with trumpet, you know, if, if I don't, even though it's a small horn, I'm not using a lot of air, I need some degree of compression because I have resistance in my reed. So, so this is enough. This isn't like, uh, uh, uh. Uh, but I want some essence of this. So if I, and I want to get that. So the, I put the effort into a little bit, making sure that the vacuum is, creates a good amount of space. And then I try to support a let. I know if that makes, helps. I don't know if that makes any sense. Does that, does that make sense to you guys? So like, I, I think if, if you're a person that's thought about this a lot, it, you have to do a lot of <sighs> that. So like letting, like having the trumpet here and not trying to play, but connecting with the breath. <sighs> and, and not letting it be like this. If I did a hand motion, <sighs> it's not that. How does a timpani player hit? Boom, and they get out of the way. So that's my playing. I'm getting out of the way. I'm not, duh, I'm not pushing. No, I'm, led, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting till a certain part of the slide to where I'm the fastest and I, and I put my weight into the slide and then I connect with the chops. I hope this is making sense. I'm a spatial thinker, okay? So I feel there's a lot of potential with connecting with this part. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a yin yang, so like, it's not, that's backwards. I have to, I'm holding that and let it go. It's like, 
Let this, the action is get away. Get away from pushing. I did this for years. I was push, 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 support, support, blow, blow, blow. But until I started realizing that some of the, I was getting in the way of the natural motion of my diaphragm, like you perfectly said, then it became a lot easier. I know you're looking at me kind of blankly. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. I, we can, let's talk about it later, if that, if that totally doesn't make sense. But for you, um, Derek, I want you, to, I want you to find that sort of the let go on this note. Like you're, you're letting yaddy yaw ee. Oh, no, that was ta, but <laughs> let me hold your trumpet with your left hand, okay? Relax, it's my arm. There you go. So, <laughs> okay, yeah. It's like that's the air going, relax. Da dee bum, la dee bum. Try it. It's okay. Be reckless with good form. Did you hear a little, a little hint of something there? Let's try it again. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, yeah, you were controlling that too much. Do this once for me. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Oh, I'm right-handed. Okay, so I, this is going to be awkward. I want you to go. <laughs> you see? That's exactly what you're doing. And you're holding your, your hand is kind of stiff. I know. I, it takes a little coordination. I know. That's it. One more time. Yeah, the action is pull, get away. And it's still too thoughtful. It's too careful. There needs to be some sort of rawness. If I, real quick, I know I'm like way off of time, but um, if I started as a tuba player and I wanted to take a breath and blow my lips, it would be like this, right? <gasps> right? Let's call that, let's call that this for sake of space. <gasps> now, if I become a little smarter and I play trombone, <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no offense, trombone players. Horns, you're next, sorry. Um, so I still want to take the essence of the tuba breath, but I can't put it through that hole or that mouthpiece. So I start with the same breath, but a different resistance point. <gasps> Something like that. Now you play horn, you get really egotistical, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> same nature. Now. The, the curve is, the, the tension curve is becoming exponential. It's not like just a little bit, little bit. You know, we have resistance comes higher. So same breath as the tuba. Now look what happens when I reach the top of the evolutionary, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's only funny because it's so untrue. Um, but look at the amount of, Look how difficult it is to remain, maintain. Now remember, see this section in here? That section should still be exactly the same as it was when the tuba player was playing. Do you follow me? Th this shouldn't all of a sudden be It should still have, now it might be faster, just like when you squeeze a hose down, but the purity and the freedom of it should still be there. Look at the, I'll show you two versions. One is if I contort it too much. One is if I put the responsibility to maintain this, listen to the resonance. It's like, it almost fills the room because I'm trying to maintain the essence of this. So when you go to play, make sure that there's some serious freedom within the breath that you're taking, even though you're trying to get it into here. Okay. Let's do it faster. And yadi bom, even faster than the exit. Ready? Two, ready. There you go. 
start there. Ready, two, three, let go. Oh my gosh, you're being a perfect example of this is great. Good job. So later on, I'm going to talk to you about how change happens from a like a mm, philosophical, mental, physiological way, okay? Because we just represented it here. This was great. Don't tongue it like you don't have enough air. What is what is articulation? How the note starts. Oh, how the note starts what? Interruption of the air. Interruption of the air? Okay. We could argue about semantics, and, uh, and, but the point is, what I'm trying to make is that articulation is the beginning of sound or divided sound, right? Yeah. If we talk about tongue or if we talk about the air, it's, I mean, those are means to an end, but really what articulation is divided sound. So when I'm working on like the Honegger and I have, I don't want to go, there's a lot of articulation there, but not a lot of sound. I want. My struggle is trying to keep as much sound in there, even though I'm dividing it. So when you do this, don't play that upper note like you don't have enough air and you're going. You have enough air. Like sing it in the head voice. La di oh, oh, oh. Yahoo! Okay? <laughs> Don't sue me on that one. <laughs> so, do you ever, do you know, what I'm, I know I'm like, I'm dying over here over time, but the head voice is a great place for us to learn how to position the body to let the air leave. Do you ever work at the head voice? Woo! Hee! If I go, ah! But a lot of trumpet players play from the standpoint of I'm singing from that chest voice. Oh, you know, it's like we are we are sopranos. The body needs to be in the position of like that. So make sure I don't, we're out of time. But when you're working on these, I want you, one assignment I would give you is I want you to practice short little bursts of fast notes. And to see how easy you can get them, like ba ba da ba dum, la ba da ba ding, ba ba da ba dum, and to see like, see if you can somehow. Don't be the pool player that comes up to the pool table and then takes 45 seconds to. We don't have that kind of time, you know. Be the person that's sort of like, mm, and hits it, and you probably have the same ratio, you know. So I think. I want you to be more fluid with the body and, and see if you can play some like fast little short passages that you're not trying to over control just to like see like like one of the tests. Like could you that's extreme. But but could you do something like I'm not over controlling that. I'm sort of throwing myself at that and I've learned in a small way how to how to make that happen. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. Great job. Okay, thanks, Derek. <laughs>